he was taking care of his father's business. And as he went down to the temple, he went to the temple to do what? To teach. He went to teach. And the Bible says, according to the Gospel of, of John, that all the people came to him and he sat down and he taught them. And then the scribes, we've got a picture of this now, Jesus, early in the morning now, comes from the mountain, or comes to the mountain of Olives. He's sitting around, the people around him, and he's teaching. And it's a great moment, because you got to understand, it, it would be like almost a theater, but it wasn't play. That as the teacher would, would, would sit, It was almost like that cue. The people wouldn't listen. Jesus would sit. The people would just, just gather around him. And there was really no set time. But they would just gather around him. And they would listen. They would watch. And here Jesus was. He was teaching. John doesn't speak about the discourse that he's having with the people. But he's teaching. Because everything about a good teacher, they're always teaching. How they act, how they react, how they dress, how they speak. They're always teaching. Jesus was always in teaching mode. And as the people were around him, they were watching him. And the Bible said, the scribes and the Pharisees, they, they, they came around and they brought something with them. So here he is, teaching Yeshua and the people around him. And then they came in, the scribes and the Pharisees, they came in and they threw the woman in front of him. And they made a profound statement. They said, this woman was caught in act of adultery, full stop. Understand something. In Israel, in the Middle East, first century, this century, there was a few things that would immediately bring the judgment upon a person's head. If a person was caught stealing in some part of the Middle East, if you stole with your right hand, you better learn how to be left-handed because they would cut your right hand. When a person was caught in adultery, immediately, it wasn't a question what was going to happen. It was when. Who was going to be the first person that was going to bring the judgment? But you couldn't just do it out of ignorance. You had needed witnesses. So here they came in, listen. The Sadducees and, and the scribes, the Pharisees and the scribes, they, they come in, they throw the woman down on the ground, and, and they said, this woman was caught in the very act. Notice who's missing in this. Where was the man who committed adultery with him? You won't find this in your Bible, but he was a faster runner. That's how it was. He heard the cut. Bam! He just cut. He just cut. He just cut. He just cut. They left him, but they caught her. She wasn't fast enough. And they said, what are you going to do? Because this is what the word said. The word said, Moses has said that such a one should be stoned. Now, all over the middle, and all over Exodus, we read time and Deuteronomy. We read time and time again. Where the law says that a person who commits the act of adultery, the person who breaks the marital covenant, the person who sins against God and man and themselves, this person must be killed by a public storm. If the stoning happens private, it's considered murder. If it happens public with the witnesses, it's considered justice. The people are watching this. Notice that John said they asked him this. They want to test him. And this is this is Jesus. The Bible says that. Just started to 
Watch. John chapter 3. I want you to say, 
Say it with me. John 3, 16. On the count of three. One, two, three. Go. Verse 17. Go. Without looking at your Bible. <laughs> See what happens? Right? We know it. The scripture scripture. What does it say? Follow. Verse 16 again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to what? To condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See, people don't understand that Jesus came not to condemn the world, but to save the world. He came not to condemn us. He already knows that we are sinners. In fact, before he went to the cross, he knew every sin that you and I would never, ever, 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 ever commit. And he rushed to the cross on the cross. He came not to condemn us, but that we who believe would have life through him. He knew this woman's sin. He didn't need any spies of the Pharisees the Sadducees to bring her to him. He knew exactly what her fault was. But he wanted to teach a more higher lesson. Greater principle. This is what I want to share with you. How easy so holy and so righteous. So absorbed in our I'm a good person serving God. I'm doing everything I need to do. And yet, yet they are, are treating me so well. But we can and we all are sinners. And no one's perfect. And the pain that you have experience with others. And I, I promise you, you live long enough. And sometime in your life, you're going to cause someone else a similar kind of pain. It may not be the same thing that you do, but it will affect them in a deep way. So at this moment now, and this is, this is a powerful moment, I pray that our, our team, the church, one day will act this out. you got to understand, this woman is a Praying for her life. She's waiting for one of these rock stones to bust her head open. She's waiting. She can't run. Fear is gripping her too much to run, and she would not get away from it. There was a wall of people around her, and the men of that time, ah, uh, men of that time, already had the rocks in hand. They were waiting. They were waiting. And when Jesus finally speaks, goodness, this is what he said. So, he's silent. He's riding on the ground. When he's riding, we will never know. At least on this side of the turn. Then he raises himself up and he speaks. Verse 5, listen. Most surely I say to you. No, 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 no. This is what he says. I apologize. He says, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Did you see how wisdom is important? Do you see how significant it is that you walk in the spirit? Not in the flesh. She was guilty. Her accusers knew it. God knew it. Those around her knew it. But instead of throwing her out because of her sin and killing her, Jesus said to those who rocks in the hand, if you are without sin, 
Now understand how powerful that statement is. Did you know that if a man who was in the audience that morning, remember, where were they at this time? They are at the temple. That's where you go to get your sins purged. So if a man just came back from praying and asked God to forgive him of his sin, and he was there, he could have been the first stone. And their life would have been over. But Jesus knew the condition of their hearts. He knew that those that were accusing her did not, did not ask God for forgiveness. They were just guilty. And she was. Yeah, the sins were different. But they were guilty. This morning, I, I really want, I really need, the church needs you. We need you to get to the place where you understand that God is requiring us not to be selfish, but to be selfless. To understand that God is bringing broken people and broken vessels in his house. God is not bringing people who are so fully equipped and so fully, he's bringing those who are just like you, if you're honest, who need the touch of God, who needs his Holy Spirit, who needs his word, who needs God to bless you. You have to understand that if God doesn't move in you, it's not going to be done. God uses crap pots. That's how the light shines through. And what took place? I love it. And again, he stood down and he rolled on the ground. And those who heard it be convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the least. I believe the reason why John articulated to the oldest is because the man who was the elder among them recognized at that moment he saw all of his sins. All the time that he sinned and he didn't get caught. All the time that, 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 that he didn't pass go. And he said, I see walked away. He said, I don't want any part of this. I don't want any part of this. When you get to that place where you recognize what's in your heart, what's in your life, when God's word can still convince you, when God's presence can still move on, then you know you're in the right place. I always get weary when I come across a person who's heart has become hard. Always become weary of the person who no longer can submit and harness to God. It's only a matter of time. Verse 9, listen. Verse it says, and again he stood down, he stood down and wrote on the ground. And those who were being convicted, by the conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the elders to the least. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. So, church, I gotta ask you a question. Where did the people? You see, it wasn't just those who had the rocks in their hand, but those who stood. Watching, agreeing with what was going to take place. Everyone left him. Everyone went away. Because they understood, my God, my God. I was partaking in this. And you and I fall in this trap as well. When we know we're not perfect, we know that we have sin. And when someone else's sin gets exposed, we become so righteous. 